Hi everybody, this is Anne. If you're watching this video, chances are you already realize how valuable and healthy tapping into your artistic side can be. It can help you feel less stressed, improve your concentration, and give you an outlet to escape the confines of everyday life. We'll be exploring a clay technique called cold carving. The cold in cold carving stands for continuous one-line drawing, and this video will feature my husband Jim, who's become somewhat proficient in this technique. Here are a few examples of his work. For this video, we're going to trade places. I'm going to be behind the camera, and Jim's going to be doing the demonstrating. So I've always been a doodler, and after watching and filming Anne for the last couple of years, I began to wonder whether or not I could apply those doodling techniques to pottery. So I began to sneak into Anne's studio late at night to play with some of her tools. I began carving on some of the pieces that were left over from some of our video work. And recently, Anne has been kind enough to throw me some pieces to work on because uh, I am not a potter. We add some lines to uh, create some boundaries for the carving. I think this is an important step in the process if you're going to try this technique. It may sound a little counterintuitive, but I believe when you restrict the areas that you're going to be working in, it actually helps to nudge your creativity. I only have to be concerned with this one little area where I can let my mind roam freely. Here I'm using the three millimeter car detailing tape. I really like using this tape. It's uh, very flexible and pliable, and it sticks very well to the porcelain, especially after you heat the porcelain up a little bit with a heat gun. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in getting some. For my carving, I like to use these diamond core carving tools. They're incredibly well made and they were inspirational to me to get started in this. Now you don't really have to use fancy tools like these. You could use a needle tool or just a sewing needle stuck in a cork like we've used in many of our videos. I also use a two inch paintbrush and I keep a bucket of water at my feet to help catch the clay crumbs. Yeah, I'm a potter. So when I start to carve, I kind of pick a spot in the middle of the piece and I'm really not thinking about trying to make anything in particular other than little movements about a half inch, quarter inch in length in various directions. I'll throw a little curve in every now and then. I'm really just trying to think about filling up the space in a very randomized way and let my mind travel to wherever it wants to go. Maybe there's a little music on or something that's getting me thinking about something else while my hand is kind of taking over and doing the work. I try and think about it the same way I would as if I were doodling on the back of a post-it note. Because I want this line to be one continuous line, I start in the middle as I mentioned, and I want to be able to leave a little space so that when I come back around I'll be able to connect those two lines. Generally I'm working from left to right, but I want to guide my patterns at times up, some down, some sideways, some at different angles. I want to reflect the randomness of the process, at the same time have it intentional, but not manufactured. This is a very meditative process for me, and there's a lot of research out there that really talks about the benefits of this kind of practice. At times we hear from artist friends who say that they're stuck creatively or they're intimidated by the blank canvas. I really believe that this particular exercise can eliminate some of that intimidation and some of the anxiety around having to try and create something. I really find it quite freeing. Now as I come around the other side of the pot, I do have to plan a little bit because I see where I've ended there and I see where I began. So I do have to do a little problem solving to ultimately connect the two points. Anne always says, art is solving problems. And I hate to say she's right, but by me solving this problem of connecting the two lines, it really helps to nudge my creativity. Here I just check to see if the carving depth is relatively the same around the whole piece. And I'll just re-carve over some of those areas that aren't quite as deep as the others. And now I go to work on the bands. 
I use a little smaller carving tool here because at first I just want to trace around that tape. So I start with a very light scratching around the bands and then I work deeper on my second and third times around. I really want the glaze to settle into those cracks and to help define the borders. After I take the tape off, I go over the piece with a very lightly dampened sponge. This really helps refine the piece by smoothing out those lines where the carving tool cut through the clay. I use a circular motion with the sponge so that I'm catching all of the angles of the lines. Once again, I go back and I check to see if any of the areas are over sponged or some of the areas aren't as pronounced as they should be. And I'll just re-carve over those areas if needed and give them a light sponging to finish it up. I also carved this larger vase, which I'll show you a little bit later in the video. So we bisked it to cone 04, and you can see the piece is ready for glazing now. I re-taped the areas where the borders are, because I don't want glaze in those areas. And I went ahead and waxed the bottom, because I'm a terrible glazer. Now I'm going to be using the evilest of all glazes. This is the Amoco Ochre. I have several pair of shoes, pants, and shirts decorated with this color. I'm taping off the top here because I want to do something different with another glaze there. This particular glaze loves to go on thick. I don't think you can put it on thick enough. I love the texture and look of it when it's fired, but it's so unforgiving. If you get any of it on your hands and you contaminate something with it, you're not getting it off. I recently completed my third degree black belt in cussing thanks to this glaze. Because this glaze is so thick, I've really learned to have to brush up and down and sideways and all around, and especially heavy around the banded areas where the tape is, to get those areas that I've carved to stand out. I remove the tape just after the glaze is dried, so that the tape doesn't flake away the glaze. I'm going to leave the white lined areas unglazed. I really like the way that white porcelain looks and feels against that glassy ochre finish. Now for the top of the bottle, I'm going to use this Amico Snow Glaze, which is a really friendly glaze. I'm just going to take the top of the bottle and dip it into the glaze. My hope is to get a thick layer up there and possibly get a little bit of a run off that top of that bottle into the ochre. We fired them to cone six, and here are some of the finished pieces. I think they came out pretty cool for a non-potter guy. I want to thank Jim for taking over this week, and if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.